we return in Minneapolis, Minnesota, the BBC on Fox. Glad to be back here with you. It's beginning of some holidays. A lot of boxing coming up here on Fox in the next couple of weeks. And let's go to the incredible tale of the tape. Presented by Credible.com. David Morell, only 23 years old. A full six foot one. That's uh, that's pretty tall at 168 pounds in this weight class. But Alantes Fox is a full six foot four, and that is his major advantage in this fight. He's a tall, rangy boxer. We've seen him have the ability to use that height and length. And we saw him change gears mid-fight against Marcos Hernandez before. But again, David Morell, even though he's just five and zero, oh, is a very different type of opponent in there tonight. A step up in class for Morell versus Alantes Fox. The main event is coming up now, uh, but he is world class and a real threat in the super middleweight division and a threat eventually to the champion Canelo Alvarez. David Morell, 23 years old, in his adopted hometown in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Let's go to the ring. Main event time, Miguel Flores. Ladies and gentlemen from the Armory, Premier Boxing Champions presents our featured bout of the evening. It is all brought to you by TGB Promotions and Warriors of Boxing. Sponsored by GEICO. Whether you rent or own, GEICO makes it easy to bundle home and car insurance. Go to GEICO.com today. This bout is sanctioned by the WBA, the President Gilberto Jesus Mendoza. The three judges ringside are Lynn Carter, Tim Cheatham, and Jesse Reyes. The referee in charge of the action is Mark Nelson. And now, boxing fans from Minneapolis, Minnesota, the time is here for our main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Super Middleweight Championship of the World. Introducing first in the red corner, wearing the green with the silver and black trim, he weighed in at 167 and a half pounds. With the record that stands, 28 victories, 13 by knockout, opposite of two defeats and one draw. Representing Forestville, Maryland, presenting the exciting Alantes Sly And now introducing his opponent across the ring in the blue corner, wearing the yellow with blue trim. He weighed in at an even 167 pounds. His record stands undefeated, five victories, including four by knockout. Representing right here in Minneapolis, Minnesota, by way of Santa Clara, Cuba, the WBA world champion and rising superstar in boxing, Morel Jr. Gentlemen, you had your instructions in the dressing room. You both know exactly what I expect. A good, clean fight. Just obey my commands and protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck to both of you. I mentioned the fight for Lantes Fox against Marcos Hernandez, and that could be uh, a real key in this bout as well. He began, Fox did, by fighting kind of short. He was getting outboxed by and outslugged by Hernandez. And then he changed tactics, he changed range, and it became a completely different fight. Now, can he do that against David Morell? It's a very different animal. However, Fox has to fight tall and rangy, use his height advantage to have a shot and not get outgunned by David Morell. Underway, first round, we are scheduled for 12. Morell has had light work his last two fights. Knockout in the first round, knockout in the third round. Not a ton of rounds, but again, Joe Goose, and you don't get paid by the round, do you? And he's had early stoppages. He has a lot of power as well. Yeah, and, and you can see right here, you know, he just tries to assert himself and I'm talking about Morell right off the bat he's going right at Fox and it looks like he's trying to use that right hook because Fox is known to keep that left hand down a lot okay and he's going right after him a little while right now but he's going right after Fox looking for that right hook he's probably throwing three or four of them like right there oh there are hands are fast too Joe left hand is fast he's got Fox dancing already 
I think those hands, Lennox, are a little faster than Fox anticipated. Right, he's pretty sharp. And you know what he's doing as well, he's throwing little sharp combinations inside, which is good. Again, Fox is a really big guy. He's he, he's got a good pedigree. His brother Michael's a great fighter. They're very sharp. He, he can fight on the inside. He can work with. And I, 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 like I said, you know, he's going to be competitive here unless Morel catches him with, with something that's really huge early. But in, in the meantime, you know, Fox is a savvy guy. This shouldn't be an easy fight. This should be a very competitive fight for the most part. Yes. <laughs> Again, that uh, opening 40 seconds, pretty impressive by Morell. And again, Fox just trying to get the timing and the range. Morell able to land uh, with the straight left hand. Able to land multiple shots here, although only with a lead five to three, according to CompuBox. There steps in again, he's able to land the left hand. Now in the combination, Morell has Fox in the corner. He can't stay there. Not if he hopes to survive. Keep your head up. Keep your head up. Fox has to get that jab going to keep Morel away from him. You're right, and keep that stick, Lennox. You're right. Not just put it out there, but make it sting. Otherwise, Morel doesn't have to respect it. Morel looks extremely comfortable right here so far. And you know, comfortable with Fox. And you know, I call him the Matrix because his movement is like the Matrix. It's not easy to hit. And I'm, ta I'm talking Morel. See that head movement right there, Lennox able just to move out of the way. He's not there to be hit. Fox missing again. Morell able to get out of range. Final 10 seconds, round number one. Did mm. Morell get a right hook? Fox gets spun around and tries to survive, and he does. That was close. Well, here's the end of the That's round. Trey Fox has followed Sorry, in the corner. Yeah, yeah, Joe. Sorry, I was just going to say, that was the end of the round. And Morell caught Fox with a with a short little hook there. A lot of this is grappling. This is what's going on at the end of the round. And then, then he just, you know, throws a, a few pity pat punches and smiles at him. Yeah, but, you know, Morell looked way too comfortable in, in that round. Again, he is calm. Poised, only outlanded Fox 10 to 5, but it seemed just to be a wider discrepancy by the way it, it went. Again, that is Alantes Fox's father in the corner, Trey Fox, his brother Michael Fox, who last time he was in Minneapolis got a, an awful decision. We had a ringside seat for that as well. It made no sense whatsoever, but Fox came back to Minnesota, says he believes he can get a fair shake. And Fox, when Fox throws that jab, he's, he's aiming for Morel's head. You know, what he should be doing is aiming for his chest, and it would be a better target for him, so he'll have more success that way. Stop. You see what Fox is doing Morel, there. by the way. I'm sorry, Bright. You see what Fox is doing on the inside. He really doesn't want to engage too much. He's uh, he, he's kind of wrestling with uh, Morel, tying him up on the inside. He wants to get back to the outside and work that length, uh, you know, the jab, the right hand. See, right there, he's got him, spin him, and get back outside like that, right there. Morell with combinations again. First fight with his new trainer, Ronnie Shields. Shields wanted to see everything working off the jab a little bit more. Obviously loved what he saw so far. Said he's worked with uh, many Cuban fighters before, including Arislandi Lara, Guillermo Rigando, fucking world-class top shelf. Yep. But he said he hoped to get his punches up off his jab and work off the combinations. And Joe Goose, so far, his combinations look smooth. Absolutely. And, and, and it doesn't hurt to mention that uh, Rigando and Laura are both southpaws. So, you know, it fits uh, right into place. He's got another Cuban southpaw here. But, uh, you know, it looks like uh, Morella settled down a little bit. Ooh, caught him with a good right hook and buzzed him a little bit. Uh, Fox, yeah, off that foot. Look, looked a little off balance. Yeah. He's able to come back now. Morell gets him into the corner. So far, Morell just calmly walking his man down. And, and he should. Fox He's in danger seemingly every moment. He shouldn't try to get overexcited. This is a 12 round fight. Go ahead, get a little experience. Use, use the time. Don't get wild. Um, you know, 
be calm and, and be precision. And he's got the capability of being a precision fighter like this, right here. And he should continue to do that. And don't get overly excited and waste punches. Good uppercut there by Morell after the body shot. That was a dynamite right hook to the body that Morell just showed off. Oh, I mentioned the easy knockouts he's had. He had a first round knockout against Mario Cazares last time out, easy work. Mike Gravonsky, third round knockout the previous time, easy work. So we're looking for him to step up in class. And so far, Morell passing every test. Well, back into Minneapolis, and we're getting ready to go here. And you see on the left side of the screen, David Morell's better work. That's a short right hook that he's able to throw there, Joe. Yeah, and uh, it's kind of what we talked about earlier, you know. Uh, Fox has had a, a, a little bit, oh, he's coming out, he's coming out of the box pretty hot here, Fox, but he, he's had trouble. Every time he's been hurt, it's been uh, with that low left hand, and, and he, he got caught with that hand down low by that hook, so he's got to, when you're in punching ditches, he's got to keep that hand up better. Yeah, Fox is doing a good job because last couple of rounds he's been giving up too much uh, uh, room yeah. and putting him up, himself up against the ropes. So he's being a little bit more aggressive now and controlling the tempo of the fight. Yeah, that could work for him. Well, got a balance him. there and he went down, but that's not a knockdown Mark Nelson referee, obviously, pointing that out. I, I pointed out as well earlier, Alantes Fox had, has stepped up in class a number of times. Uh, that's where he's got two of his losses. One to Liam Williams, he was knocked out by a hook. Uh, but he also fought very well against Demetrius Andre, who's a highly skilled fighter, one of the best middleweights in the world. And he knocked Andre down in the seventh round. So that is the man that Morell is facing here tonight, a guy who has faced a very highly skilled fighter, a world-class fighter, and a guy who's had a belt for many years in Andre. And we're going to get to see exactly how Morell compares to a guy like Demetrius Andre, speaking of a, a skilled southpaw juggler. Yeah, and look, as we're talking, uh, you know, three, guys. Fox is getting eaten up by some short little punches by Morell and complaining to the referee. I don't know exactly why, but right before that set, he spun off the ropes, and I'm talking about Fox, and got caught with another right hook by Morell. So that's been finding a home for Morell, is that right hook. Now, you see on the inside here, let love I'm sorry, Brian. Yeah, Go you ahead. have to love Morell's poise, Joe, too, when you see yeah. that. Just, he's extremely calm. I mean, his shoulders so relaxed and able to throw his shots. Look at that, his hands are dropping. He's already in the pocket. And just able to, as he turns orthodox here briefly, is also just able to land harder shots against Fox. Now he's thoroughly dominating, uh, but he seems to be a class above against a guy who's got 28 professional wins. And he's turning up, he's turning softball as well. Hard shot, uppercut off the hook. Yep. Morell doing beautiful work here in round three. Morell showing a lot more in this fight than I've seen him in, in the past fights. He's showing the southpaw stands and uh, different moves that he wants to try. I mean, he's got so much talent, you know, we haven't seen it all yet. No, no question, the next final 20 seconds of round three. And he looks calm, and he's a combination of defense and outstanding offense as well. Heavy hands, Fox trying to establish some range, trying to get that jab out there and keep Morell at bay. Time. By the way, we're coming at you on Christmas Day. We're also coming your way on New Year's Day, Saturday, January 1st, a stacked night of five heavyweight fights. The main event, Luis Ortiz taking on Charles Martin. A pay-per-view at a special price of $39.99. You can buy it now on the Fox Sports app. You get to see Frank Sanchez on that card as well. As well as a rematch of Johnny Rice and Michael Coffey. And then also, hey, here's the official announcement. February 5th, our next pay-per-view, Keith Thurman, former welterweight champion of the world against Mario Barrios. Also get to see Leo Santa Cruz, Abel Ramos, Josecito Lopez as well. That's February 5th on Fox Pay-Per-View. So with you throughout the holidays. And right here, David Morell with his new trainer, Ronnie Shields, completely calm and relaxed, starting to take a hard Alantes Fox. Lennox, what type of shot do you give Fox? And you mentioned you know, I mean, he's got to use that jab more. What's possible against a guy like Morell? Okay. Well, you know, what, what uh, Fox has done, the punch that he doesn't throw that much is that left hook. And that seems like a, you know, honey punch for him. So he needs to attempt that left hook a lot more. 
also punching, doing some little body punches, and also when Morel throws a combination, after he finishes his combination, Fox needs to open up with his combination, not just leave it like that. Fox now working off the jab. By the way, uh, Morel has not landed many jabs in this fight as well. You mentioned Ronnie Shield has good right hands on the body from Morel, but everything else seems to be working. So, you know, sometimes, you know, I don't know whether you're Roy Jones Jr. or depending on who you are, you know what I'm saying, Joe? Like, Roy Jones didn't jab at all. It didn't matter. He's still great. Larry Holmes jabbed all the time. He was great. It doesn't seem like Morel is going to be a guy just working off his jab. As you see, he's landed one so far. Seems to be doing okay. Uh, Hard right hand, Fox goes reeling back into the corner. Just you. Now he's hurt hard left hand by Morel. Oh. Good hook. And Fox goes down after absorbing that Four, left hand to the five, jaw. Six. And that was seven, while he was being wrestled eight, with. He, he landed nine. that shot. Walk to me. Walk to me. Walk to me. You're right, Joe. That was at short range. Yeah, it, it wouldn't look like that'd be a shot that would put you down. Oh, the oh. first knockdown of the fight. Here's on four, and he's on wobble legs. Fox is hurt. Morel moves in again. Uppercut. This is misses with the hole. Oh, he's a great finisher. He may stop, but the ref may stop this fight if he makes another combination. By Morel. Oh, ran into an uppercut. Hard, devastating work by oh. David Morel, looking to have a signature knockout on this night. Strafing left hand across Fox's chin. Oh, oh, he's landing time left. One minute to go in round number four. Landing at will, and Merv Dennis is taking a close look. They're, they're throwing in the towel. Uh, Fox was trying to hold on, but Trey Fox, Alantes, Fox is dead. Stood up on the ring apron and threw in the towel. This fight is over, and David Burrell with an impressive knockout win. Let me tell you, his father, Fox's father did the right thing. Yeah. They really did the right thing on that one. You know, and as far as when you said David Morrell doesn't throw a lot of jabs, he's working off of the jab. He's working off the other guy's jab. He realized the guy's got a long jab, so he's hey. working off of Fox's jab. That's why I let you take the jab question. <laughs> if anybody knows a jab, it's you. Look, I got to tell you something. Morello was just fighting this time. Yeah. He was just waiting to get close enough or in the right position to land a couple of good hard shots. You saw earlier when he landed a couple of hooks, he was hurting Fox with little uppercuts and stuff. He knew if he got some real leverage on a couple of punches, it was going to be all over. And the dad had seen enough. It was a great stoppage. I don't think Michael, or I'm sorry, Atlantis Fox was going to get out of that round very successfully how that not been stopped. Go to rest Montez was frustrated there in the corner. Uh, we've seen stoppages by trainers slash fathers before. We saw it with Sean Porter against Terrence Crawford a few weeks back. Uh, but in this fight, it wasn't like Fox was even winning any rounds. David Morell established himself early wins by early knockout. Well, that is an extremely impressive performance by David Morell. We wanted to see how he would respond against the higher level competition. Uh, he had no trouble at all with a guy with a record of 28-2-1. Fox disappointed, obviously didn't even want it to be stopped, but uh, he was getting battered around. Let's go to the ring and Miguel Flores. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Mark Nelson called a stop to this contest at two minutes and six seconds of round at number four. For your winner by TKO and still the WBA super middleweight champion and undefeated David Morrell Jr. Well, we saw a stoppage that uh, we really have never seen before, the likes of which. Uh, the weird things were happening there. Alantis Fox is, is disappointed, but the way it stopped, we'll, we'll show it to you when we come back. I don't think you've seen this either. A knockout win for David Morell as he moves to 6-0. and oh, And this fight really was established in the, uh, the opening seconds of this fight. Really, in the first 30 seconds, Morell showed his class. Uh, but it was uh, a puzzling end to the fight. So let's go back through it. Brian Kenny with Lennox Lewis and Joe Goosen. And let's go back earlier in the round. In the final round, Joe, just how 
he started to hurt Alantes Fox. Yeah, well, you know, there were several things going on here. Uh, and and one of them was that short little left hand right there. You saw he just twisted a little short left hand. Boom, right there. It, 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 it looked like a little left hook, even though it was coming from the southpaw side. But he had already been hit with a few other punches before that one that put him down there. Now, here's the last fury. So, Morell jumps in with an uppercut that got blocked, chopped him with a little left hand to the ear, and then another one right on the chin. He's getting hurt pretty good right now, Fox. And when Morell is going after you, it's hard to stop him. And so now he's throwing a flurry on, and there's a couple more punches, that right hook, right uppercut, and then another left uppercut, two left uppercuts. So. And you're going to hear Trey Fox on the corner. Let's listen in to Trey Fox and see how it unfolded as he saw the towel come in. Listen up. <laughs> so Trey Fox was calling for the end of the fight. But by the way, the towel is coming from the other side. And that, I believe, Joe, is coming from Ronnie Shields. So yeah. Ronnie Shields threw in the towel. Yeah. And well, he took a real chance. Right, he did. Could, I mean, yeah. no one's ever going to stop the fight it, it, the other it, way around. But still, you don't do that, right? He, no, I, I, I wouldn't. Here's the thing. You've got an inspector in the corner of uh, uh, Atlantis Fox, OK? If the dad couldn't get the attention, the inspector could have jumped in at any time. You're taking a chance, throwing in a towel for the opposite corner from your corner. That could be misconstrued. Who knows what the legality of that is? I don't know, but I'll yeah. tell you what. I mean, I'm all for good sportsmanship, but there's other mechanisms to take care of that. You've got a doctor, you've got the referee, you got the inspectors, and you got their corner. I would have just stayed out of it and let the other powers to be handle it.